Under certain circumstances, a short task that you set out to achieve could end up taking you a full workday worth of your time, or potentially even longer. This can really kill your momentum and productivity in the worst kind of way, but it can definitely be evaded. Stick around to find out how. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about Parkinson's law, the phenomenon where we expand work to fill the time we allocate to complete it. Before I go ahead and tell my little story associated with this topic today, I wanted to mention that I have made two other videos which go hand in hand with this one, and I highly recommend watching them all somewhat close together, even though I staggered their release by the time you're watching this one you probably will know that the others are out so like i say i highly recommend going and watching them as well because the picture that they're painting is kind of all intertwined with what I'm going to be talking about today. Those two videos are on the planning fallacy and time boxing as well. So feel free to do that. I've left links down in the description below. Let's get on with it. Parkinson's law, like I mentioned just before, is a phenomenon that occurs often in our day-to-day -day lives and it kills productivity. The idea behind it is that work or tasks that we set for ourselves to achieve expand in scope to fill the time that we allocate towards doing them. A common example would be when we look through the eyes of a student at school and they have an assignment that has a due date that has been set by their teacher. A large number of assignments, and this is worldwide, it's a phenomenon that occurs everywhere. I myself went through it for like 20 years of schooling and tertiary education combined, where an assignment is set and that could be set six weeks or six months earlier. It doesn't matter. The majority of those assignments are going to be handed up on the day or day before they are due. And there are many reasons as to why this happens, procrastination being one of the common influences in these types of scenarios. If a deadline for something like an assignment is set well into the future, it's never going to be someone's number one priority for them to complete anytime soon. Now, I'm generalizing here, but we as humans will use any excuse to get out of doing whatever it is we actually need to do in that moment because it might be unappealing, it might be dry, or it might be a boring topic in nature. And that is just too hard to really sink time and effort into when it's a sunny day outside. I don't wanna keep my head in the books. I wanna go and enjoy whatever it is that's going on in my life that's a little bit more entertaining at that period of time. And then you get to that point where it's almost like a light switch flicks in your brain, in your mind, in your head, and you go, oh, I should probably put some effort into this because I think I can calculate ahead and I don't know if I'm actually gonna get that assignment done by that deadline to get that passing mark. I should probably start now. So you actually do it. You start working on that assignment and you might work consistently until that due date occurs, where in some circumstances, some very brave people might start working on that assignment the day before it is due. Personally, I wish those types of people all the best with their formal careers because in the real world with a real job, it's generally not as simple as starting the night before. However, I knew lots of people that managed to get through both their high schooling and tertiary education with that mindset to do those types of assignments at that pace. And it's something that I really do commend them for, but it's not something that has definitely carried forward with them into their working careers. I'm getting sidetracked now, but it is something worth mentioning, I suppose. Do your homework and start well ahead of when something is going to be due. Now, the second reason that this occurs is that when people are working on something like an assignment, they might be working on a piece of work, they might be setting a goal, a task, a challenge, whatever it may be, they tend to focus on not as important, we'll call them less important aspects of that specific task or assignment. This is known as bike shedding. Let's go through a quick example. Let's say that the assignment that was set was to design the most functional bicycle possible. And let's say that the bike shedding component is where the per <laughs> bike shedding bicycle, that's funny. Let's say that the person who is designing that bicycle focuses a lot of attention on the color of the bike frame instead of the more functional components such as the wheels, the gears, or the handles. It could technically be counted as a time wasting activity because the more important functional components of the bike haven't yet been fleshed out. That's where the marks are going to come from. If you're going to be time constrained, if that time that you have to allocate towards that task is going to run out and you're going to have to spend more time doing it, focusing on things that are actually important towards your grades, that's a time wasting exercise. You should focus on the most important aspects first. And then if you have time, 
Sure, pick a color for the bike. This is often seen when working in groups. If the people in the team aren't motivated, they are going to find ways, even if it's not intentional to stall progress. And this is where I'll definitely chime in and say that I have fallen into these traps 100%. I will be the first person to put my hand up and say, this has happened to me plenty throughout my entire life, not just my schooling, everyday life in general. Using this YouTube channel as an example, like you're watching me through the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, you know, all of that jazz. But truthfully, writing scripts for this video takes time. I really love getting involved, learning about what topics I'm going to be talking about, understanding them, and then talking about them because it's a really good refresher to go through it. However, some of the timelines that I've allocated to write a script have been blown out of proportion and just become outright just outrageous. There is a waste of time almost, I, I guess I could say that. And I'll give you one example right now. I sat down to write a script. Can't remember what the video was for. I could probably dig it up. I'm too lazy. I said in my, in my mind, I said, I'm going to start at 8 a.m. And I'm stopping at 10 a.m. I'm done there. Let's see how much we can get done. I'll pick it up on another day if I don't get it finished. And so I sat down at 8 a.m. that morning and I went, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's start. Started making some progress. And I was writing about the topic and I'm just typing things out, fleshing it out, figuring out what I want to get into it. And I blinked and it was like 10 p.m. And I was 50% of the way through. And I sat there and went, how? What the hell went wrong? How have I not finished this video? How have, how have I not got a script after a full day, a whole weekend I wasted writing this script and I could not believe that I had only gotten 50% of the way through. And the reason that this occurred is Parkinson's law in general. I let work expand into the time that I had allocated and the time that I had to complete it. Starting a task early is great, but not understanding the scope and what specifically needs to go into it is going to help you fall off track very quickly. Ever since I realized that I was falling into this trap, I started to plan my scripts out and this has worked wonders for me because and it's super important to understand this when you zoom out and you look at the scale of the production this is a pretty simple video it might be between 5 and 15 minutes that you're watching right now that might not seem like all that much effort's gone into it but now i'm approaching 300 videos on this channel now and i could not care less if people watch or don't it's your choice to spend your time watching these if you find them insightful and helpful make sure to hit that like and subscribe button but truthfully could not care less. I'm doing this for me to learn about these topics and learn how to get on top of everything that I do to be more productive. Every video I have made has added value to my knowledge in terms of finance, personal development, my health, mental health, freedom, time management, everything involved. I have learned so much from actually fleshing these topics out being able to talk about them and understand them, but that is a massive time sink. 300 videos is a massive time sink. That's 300 scripts. I've written one for every single video in that list. Really picture how if you've got a structured system and understand you're not falling into the traps of things like Parkinson's law, how effective that's gonna be for you. Whereas if you're someone who ends up wasting three days writing every script, you're gonna lose a year of life, of your entire life, just typing away. Super important to get that perspective with anything that you do in general. And I really wanted to go on that rant because it really like sunk in once I realized 300 videos is a lot of videos. Like I have to put massive emphasis on it. What I've done to put this in place where I now only give myself a specific amount of time to write my scripts. And if I don't get it done in that period of time, I stop. I come back to it another day because, because I will fall into that trap. I will fill that time. I'm not in the right headspace. If I'm not getting it done in that time, I should be able to get it done in that time. And so I put roadblocks in place to make sure that I don't get caught out by this phenomenon known as Parkinson's law. This works hand in hand in the opposite direction as well. Giving myself 15 minutes to write a script is all well and good. That's like, haha, Parkinson's law, you won't get the better of me. You're not gonna take up a whole day of my time to write this script. So I'm gonna do it in 15 minutes. Understanding what the topic is before I actually start typing away is super important too, because 15 minutes probably isn't going to be long enough to write one of these scripts. So making sure that I know what's going to have to go into the script before I actually start writing it, 
again, it's more power to me to get the job done well within the appropriate time frame that I set for myself. Essentially set yourself a time limit after you understand the assignment. This kind of steps into time boxing territory. So I'm gonna kind of refer you over to this video right here somewhere down here, because that will definitely give you some more guidance on how to map out your tasks and actually set appropriate timeframes to get them done. This is kind of separate to Parkinson's law where I'm talking about why this happens, what this phenomenon is and why it occurs. Go watch that video to understand how to actually approach mapping out those tasks. Two separate things kind of intertwined. Okay, time to summarize some of the key takeaways. Generally, the quality of the work you produce won't always be better if you work on it for longer. That's number one definitely something worth understanding. You could be so productive and get a really good piece of work put together and then you could probably spend another week working on it, but that whole extra week could be wasted. Understand quality isn't improved all the time by amount of time worked on it. Number two, the more time that you set for yourself to complete a task means the more time you're going to be working on that task. Again, this can work against productivity if you allocate too much time to complete said task. Sometimes it shouldn't take very long whatsoever and you should be aware of that when setting your time limits of how much time you're gonna spend doing it. And this is where I kind of advocate massively for learning how to manage your time. Time management will do wonders for your life because you'll be better off for it in the long run. You will just learn to stop wasting time when trying to achieve something. Overall, I highly recommend becoming familiar and actually putting these into practice. These phenomenons, which are occurrences that happen every single day in our lives with every single task that we do for the most part. Understanding them, knowing how to navigate them and knowing how to kind of avoid the traps that they pose is super important for just general life and your work and your studies, whatever it is you are at whatever age you are. It might even be with your kids and teaching them. There's endless possibilities to fall into these types of traps. Some of them, it's okay. It might be quality time spent with friends and family while doing a specific task. However, sometimes there's a time crunch. Sometimes you just can't afford to waste that time. And this is one way to really get a grasp on it, understand whatever it is you need to do differently, and then actually put it in place to achieve the goals, the outcomes that you're wanting to achieve. I highly recommend watching the three videos I've talked about briefly, the other two, I'll leave links down in the description below, watch them all close together, gain an understanding for them, and then put it into practice. That is where I'm gonna leave you. Sorry that it was a bit ranty. However, this is the best way I could think about communicating it. And I really wanted to put some serious emphasis on some of the points I covered. That is pretty much it. If you enjoyed today's video, if you learned something or I made you think, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below. It really does help the channel grow. And I really do appreciate the support. I'm very happy with how the channel has grown over the years. So yeah, if you want to do that, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do that. And I will leave you there. Have a good day. Have a good week. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.